Mr. Lim Biao Chuan. So I support the proposed amendments to the various articles of the Constitution. Article 45 sets out the criteria for the disqualification of members of Parliament. Article 45E states that the person shall not be qualified to be an MP if he has been convicted of an offence by a court of law and sentenced to imprisonment for a term of not less than one year or a fine of not less than $2,000 and has not received a free pardon. The fine quantum of $2,000 has not been revised since independence. And I agree that it is appropriate to adjust the fine quantum to ensure that the fine quantum is commensurate with the reasons why a person ought to be disqualified to be an MP. Take, for example, the sentencing guidelines for traffic offences. They have been, advanced, they, they have been enhanced after Parliament amended the Road Traffic Act in 2019. In recent court cases for careless driving, the courts came out with a sentencing framework where a person charged for careless driving resulting in grievous hurt will, find, will face a fine of $2,500 even when his culpability is low. This means that if a person were to make an error of judgment when driving and his careless driving results in an accident whereby a victim suffered a serious injury, then that person would be disqualified to be an MP as a fine for careless driving would exceed the sum of $2,000. And this is the current fine quantum for disqualification under Article 45E of the Constitution. Thus, if the Constitution is not amended, any aspiring person who wishes to stand as a candidate to be an MP would not be qualified. And any sitting MP would be disqualified if they have been convicted of a similar kind of traffic offence. So last year, I advised a client who was charged for careless driving. He had turned left and he hit a motorcycle because he missed a blind spot. The motorcycle rider suffered a fractured arm and my client was fined a total of $4,000. I was thinking to myself, this could happen to any one of us in the house, any one of us who was driving and had missed a blind spot and will be charged for careless driving and fined more than $2,000. And it will result in us being disqualified as well. So it begs the question as to whether a momentary lapse of judgment whilst driving is the kind of person is the kind of reason that a person ought to be disqualified to serve as an MP. And I will humbly submit that we ought to set a bar in the Constitution that disqualifies a person from being an MP if that person is convicted of an offence that relates to dishonesty, fraud, corruption, bribery, or, as Mr Morelli had suggested, sexual misconduct, but not for careless driving. For other offences that are technical in nature, or what we call statutory offences, we ought to review whether such offences ought to result in disqualification to be an MP as well. If we take for another example, a company director who had gotten a fellow investor who becomes a shareholder, and he cannot get his fellow shareholder to hold AGM, thus he fails to find, file an annual return and is convicted in court. Now, should the fine imposed by the court exceed $2,000, should that director also be disqualified for such a technical offence that he made a mistake in choosing a fellow investor or shareholder wrongly. So Section 45 of the Charities Act sets out the criteria where a person is disqualified to serve as a director in a charity if the person is convicted of dishonesty, including fraud, corruption, bribery and deception, or offences involving terrorism, terrorism financing or money laundering. Section 154 of the Companies Act sets out the criteria when a person is disqualified to serve as a director of a company if the person is convicted of any offence, whether in Singapore or elsewhere, involving, again, fraud or dishonesty, punishable with an imprisonment of three months or more. This disqualification criteria suggests that the state frowns on persons who have behaved dishonestly and from holding positions where they act as fiduciary to either a charity or a company. So I will urge the government to do likewise, signal the type of dishonest conduct that we wish to guard against, and not just by adjusting the quantum of the fine. So I also wish to ask the Minister to clarify, for persons who are convicted of offences overseas, may I ask the Minister whether the same criteria of referring to the quantum of fine would apply. For example, it was previously reported that in some Scandinavian countries, 
the fine for traffic offences is packed to the person's earnings. Thus, if you're a high earner in Singapore, and for some reason you're caught speeding in a Scandinavian country, now the fine for speeding may far exceed the sum of $10,000, which is the proposed new criteria for disqualification. In fact, that, that fine in that Scandinavian country is supposed to be packed to your salary. So is that the intended objective of the amendment to the Constitution? Prime Minister Lee had previously said that it would be more difficult to attract quality candidates into politics as potential candidates will have to face negative comments on social media. They have to put up with greater financial sacrifice from switching careers and also face less certainty of winning in elections. If we do not find the right people to serve in Parliament, Singapore as a country will suffer because of weaker leadership at the national level. Thus, we should amend the Constitution to ensure that the wrong type of people that, the, wrong type, that the, the type of people who are disqualified from becoming members of parliament are the ones that we want to exclude and not citizens who have made minor or technical mistakes in their lives. Thank you, sir.